Since the turn of the millennium, open world has become one of the biggest buzzwords in gaming. Whether something gets announced that promises players the freedom to explore a whole city, continent or world, our ears instantly prick up with anticipation. It might be because open world titles offer a kind of unique escapism that just can't be replicated in equally good linear releases. And whilst bigger doesn't always mean better, we still instinctively attribute a lot of value to how huge a game's map is. Despite the genre having been around for a while, there's still something magical about being able to say, I'm going to go in a straight line in that direction and just see what I find. And whether said world is packed with quests, random people to rob and murder, or just a sprawling empty wasteland with nothing but beautiful scenery, the allure of the open world is always there, and developers are always trying to one-up themselves in creating the largest playgrounds for players to get lost in. I'm Josh from WhatCulture.com, and these are the 10 biggest open worlds in video game history. Number 10. Armour 3, 104 square miles. Armour 3's massive island of Altis sounds absolutely spectacular. And it's not a half bad place for sightseeing either. A vast, realistic Greek island filled with pretty rolling hills, arid fields and tranquil Greek villages. Colossal though Altus is, it's also the first example on this list of an open world wasteland. Sure, there's a definite appeal to just bombing around the countryside, aggravating the local cops then fleeing from them. But there are almost no people to interact with in Armour 3, or no cars on the roads. And after a few hours, it feels like an awfully lonely place to be. I guess that's kind of the point though. And there's definitely a certain appeal to running around the place with a squad of buddies, carrying out tense, tactical missions around the gorgeous landscape. But a smaller world with more character inevitably has more lasting appeal. Number 9. Xenoblade Chronicles X, 154 square miles. An RPG released for the Wii U back in 2015, Xenoblade Chronicles X took players to a brand new world following the destruction of Earth at the start of the story. Crash landing on a new planet, Mira, the tidal sandbox was split up into five distinct continents for players to explore, some of which were close to environments you'd expect to find on Earth, as well as other hostile locations which you'd only expect to see in the far reaches of space. The RPG was a critical darling, with the game's world, which was likened to that of an MMO that players could immerse themselves in for years at a time, being the focus of most praise. Although another game in the franchise has been released since, it didn't match the scale found in X, with the devs opting instead for an ever so slightly smaller playground. Number 8. Ghost Recon Wildlands, 170 square miles. Ubisoft's latest installment into the Ghost Recon franchise took the series into the open world space for the very first time, and boy did it embrace its newfound freedom. Creating one of the biggest sandboxes for up to four friends to cause mayhem in, the map is big enough for co-op thrills, but it's also dense enough to hold up under a microscope. Like all games published by Ubi, there's an overwhelming amount of activities to take part in, collectibles to find, and landmarks to visit whilst you continue on your frenzied journey of gunning down as many drug smugglers as possible. It's the perfect holiday weekend away, and despite being huge, the world of Wildlands more than retains the personality and character that the best entries in the genre boast. It's just a shame that the same can't be said for the rest of the game. Number 7. True Crime Streets of LA 240 square miles. In many ways, true crime Streets of LA was too ambitious for its own good. Attempting to distinguish itself from GTA by casting players as a cop who had to abide by different rules than the thugs of that other series, the game was also notable for building a true-to-life recreation of Los Angeles. It's an impressive technological feat to be honest, especially for the time, but unfortunately the limitations of the early 2000s tech ensured that the sandbox, while being gigantic, had pretty much no personality to it. I know I shouldn't be the one talking about a lack of personality, but there was only so many times you could see the same NPCs walking the same streets in the same cars driving the same patterns before every single block started to look the same, even when you were on opposite ends of the gigantic map. Unfortunately, true crime is barely brought up at all these days, except as a footnote when players discuss the equally overlooked Sleeping Dogs, which the developers also made. It's a shame though, because despite its large, lifeless world, it was actually a pretty good shooter, and far better than some of the other GDA clones from the same time. Number 6. Just Cause 3. 400 square miles. Sticking very much to the blueprint set by its predecessor, Just Cause 3 moves the action over to the fictional Mediterranean island of Medici, but keeps the map around the same size, which is fine to be honest, as it really 
really didn't need any expanding. True to the series' tradition, the Medici Archipelago is absolutely gorgeous, and is exactly the kind of place you'd happily go on a European holiday to, if the idea of supporting a murderous dictatorship doesn't prick your conscience too much anyway. Full of blue waters, lavender fields, and sleepy towns nestled on cliff tops that are only reachable by winding rural roads. While the map is diverse though, most of the pleasures are surface level, and down on the ground the locals don't have much of a personality. But personality and character isn't the point of Just Cause 3, and the locals' vapid nature means that you won't feel guilty when you tile up to two buildings using your tethers and then catapult them directly into the sun. Number 5. Test Drive Unlimited 2 618 square miles. A game map may not feel quite as colossal when you're bombing across it at 80 miles per hour in a car, rather than on foot or horseback, but the satellite modelled islands of Oahu and Ibiza in Test Drive Unlimited 2 are still impressive in their scale, if little else. Between the two islands, there are nearly 2,000 miles of road for you to traverse, but you're free to go off the beaten track at any point, bounding over the sun kissed countrysides of both beautiful settings. A downside of open world driving games, though, is that you never quite feel as attached to the world as you do in a third person shooter for instance. You find yourself wanting to hang out with the locals, wander into the occasional building, and in Ibiza's case, check out a fully accurate interior of one of its legendary super clubs. While you can wander around a little bit in this game though, you experience the majority of the world through the windshield of your car, meaning that most things just turn into a blur anyway. Number 4. Final Fantasy XV 700 square miles. Moving into the open world genre was a daring experiment for the ambitious Final Fantasy XV. Over 10 years in the making, the title more than made up for the weight by creating an absolutely enormous sandbox for players to jump into, full of side quests to get distracted with and surprises around every corner. In fact, it could be argued that the world was too packed and that the freeform exploration took too much away from the thrust of the central narrative. That said, there's no denying that driving around with you and your boys was amazing and that pumping classic Final Fantasy themes through the radio before spotting a monster in the distance to slay had an inescapable charm to it. Admittedly, a lot of the land in the game isn't really accessible and is only seen when you fly over it, but that doesn't stop Final Fantasy XV from having one of the biggest open worlds of all time. Number 3. Fuel. 5,560 square miles. How big is too big for an open world game? This post-apocalyptic sandbox racer certainly flirts with answering that question, offering up the biggest racetrack in video game history. At the best of times, the game looks and feels awesome. As you bomb across desolate, ruined areas with burning oil fields in the distance, bounce over undulating sand dunes on your quad bike, or weave among the ruined trees of a deforested, dying area. But for all of those moments of brilliance, the majority of the world does feel like a cut and paste job, and the races and challenges littered around the map just don't do enough to pull you in. Kudos to Codemasters for their ambition, of course, as the game does offer the occasional sublime moment, but overall, Fuel feels more like a therapeutic sandbox than an actual game. Probably not what the devs were aiming for. Number 2. The Elder Scrolls 2 Daggerfall 62,000 square miles. Even though each successive Bethesda RPG seems to be getting incrementally bigger than its predecessor by a few measly miles, it's hard to see any of them reaching the terrifying scale of the second game in the series, Daggerfall. Sure, the majority of the world was just procedurally generated wilderness, but you can't help but be a little in awe of it. It really doesn't look bad for a game of its time either. You could spend hours getting lost in the auto-generating Dragon Tail Wilderness, the Endless Forests, or in one of the game's dungeons, a single one of which could probably fit all of Skyrim inside it, which isn't necessarily a good thing considering how labyrinthian these areas can be. We'd probably say that procedurally generating a giant world would be a bit lazy if Bethesda did it today, but the technological limitations of making a game in 1996 meant that this was the best way to create a convincing fantasy continent, which continues to far outsize most most games in existence today. Number 1. No Man's Sky A Quintillion Planets It may not have accomplished everything it set out to do, but No Man's Sky definitely succeeded in its goal of creating an entire procedurally generating universe for players to explore. And let's get this straight, this wasn't just a Mass Effect style universe that you could only interact with in menus either. This was a fully seamless universe with galaxies full of gorgeous, if repeating, worlds to visit. The game itself wasn't to everyone's liking, but being able to pilot a ship through space and tear down through a planet's atmosphere and land on its surface and explore was the stuff of any 
space exploration geek's dreams. Developer Sean Murray revealed that it would take 5 billion years to explore every one of the game's quintillion planets. And while he said things in the past that turned out to be false, I believe him on this. So that's our list. Let me know in the comments whether you enjoyed getting lost, literally, in these gigantic open worlds. And while you're there, please give us a like, share and subscribe, and head over to whatculture.com for even more lists like this every single day. I've been Josh, and I'll see you soon. Hey guys, thanks for making it to the end of the video, aren't you a star? Don't forget to subscribe below, and also, the people who made this video, they're right here, so go and follow them and give them some love. If you want to see more content, there's probably some stuff flowing up above my head, why not check it out? It could be fun. I'm not your dad.